Next is this, the smoking gun of the IRS scandal. Video from way back in 2010 has been uncovered showing Lois Lerner, remember her? She uh, pled the fifth, appearing to admit her role in targeting certain 501c4 groups. We're going to show you that stunning footage. You'll get reaction from Senator Rand Paul. He joins me live right here in our studio. And and welcome back to Hannity. Now, late last week, we uncovered that the IRS enemies list might go much deeper than we originally believed. Now, after House Oversight Committee Chair Darrell Issa demanded that the FEC release their communication with the tax agency for the past five years, and with this new information in mind, John Sexton over at Breitbart News may have uncovered the smoking gun. He found video of disgraced IRS employee Lois Lerner from 2010. On this tape, she admits that everyone was screaming at the IRS to stop the money pouring into the 2010 campaigns and elections. Watch this. Last year, there was the Supreme Court, although the law kept getting chipped away and chipped away in the federal election arena, the Supreme Court dealt it a huge blow, um, overturning 100-year-old precedent that said basically corporations couldn't give directly in political campaigns. Um, and everyone is up in arms because they don't like it. The election commission can't do anything about it. They want the IRS to fix the problem. The IRS laws are not set up to fix the problem. C force can do straight political activity. They can go out and pay for an ad that says vote for Joe Blow. That's something they can do as long as their primary activity is their C4 activity, um, which is social welfare. So everybody is screaming at us right now, fix it now before the election came. See how much these people are spending? I won't know until I look at their 990s next year whether they have done more than their primary activity as political or not. So I can't do anything right now. And joining me now live in studio to react to this and much more, Senator Rand Paul. His book, Government Bullies, by the way, is now out in paperback. Senator Paul, good to see you. How are yeah, you? Great to be with you. Always good to have you in studio. All right. Let, to me, this is a huge smoking gun. Let's go over this again. Uh, everyone's screaming at the IRS to stop the flood of money pouring into the 2010 elections. Um, because of the Citizens United ruling? I wonder who everybody was. Yeah, me too. You know, the president said within 30 days, someone was going to be held responsible. Do you remember the 30-day report? I think there was one, but I don't remember anybody being held responsible. And my question is, how come Lois Lerner is still collecting a check? Great point. And here's what I think. I don't know this yet, but we're researching this. I'm guessing the union contract prohibits firing employees, even for cause. You remember the teachers in New York City who were acting inappropriate with students? Yeah. And they were housed in a big, you know, John Stossel did this special on it. They were housed in this building for years at a time collecting a check. I'm wondering if Lois Lerner will work for years at a time at the IRS collecting a check, but no longer allowed to do her job, but unable to fire her because of union rules. We kind of have come a long way from rogue agents in Cincinnati, <laughs> haven't we? Well, here's the other thing. You saw the other thing that has come out. A career employee has said that it was a political official, a political appointee of President Obama, who was giving the orders. And what's happening with that? You're talking about Carter Hull. Yeah. Yeah. Was, and this is important to explain that to people because there are two appointees at the IRS. And now we know that it went all the way up to the top in Washington. And it wasn't about rogue agents in Cincinnati. So explain that a little more. Yeah. I'm wondering if the everybody who was yelling at Lois Lerner to do more were these political appointees. Carter Hull was the career appointee, correct? Right. And he mentions that it's a political appointee at the top of the agency appointed by President Obama who is making the decisions or telling them they need to go after Tea Party groups. See, the thing that I think that maybe now we, we understand a little bit more why Lois Lerner pled the fifth, because what she's talking about, if you look at the timeline, doesn't this right after this is when they started targeting Tea Party groups? Isn't that the exact timeline? Well, and you have to be a little suspicious of Ms. Lerner since 10 years before with the FEC, you know, George Will wrote a column about this saying that she told a Republican candidate, either you drop out of the race or I'll pursue you. If you drop out of the race, we'll leave you alone. Basically, bullying, which is what my book's about, government bullies, mm -hmm. people using the power of government to bully ordinary citizens. And the IRS has enormous power to bully people, and that's why it should never be used for partisan purposes. You know, I wonder if people fully understand. The FEC, apparently, had a lawyer. She used to work there. Uh, didn't they ask to share information? And isn't that illegal to do? 
In 1974, we, we passed the Privacy Act. Government agencies, even for good purposes, aren't supposed to share things. Originally, your Social Security number was what? A Social Security number. It wasn't supposed to be used for anything else. Now we have a lot of different agencies sharing data, and it's very concerning to me because I'm a strong believer in we want minimal government. We don't want government everywhere in our lives. We want to minimize their impact on our lives. We, we just had Mark Levin on, and he's talking about the Liberty Amendments. We've had 27 amendments to the Constitution passed, but none have passed the other way that Article 5 calls for, which is through state legislatures. What do you think of that idea? You know, I don't have a problem with it. There are some people who are concerned about having a constitutional convention run away and the, the Constitution be, be written. I know, and so the, what I argue to them is I've testified in favor of a balanced budget amendment in my state legislature. The state legislature can actually write the rules and say you can only vote on the balanced budget amendment. So you can restrict what they're allowed to do. The other theory, though, is, is that you get to 32, 33 states. There's such momentum, and Congress says, we don't really want a constitutional convention. The people do seem to want this amendment, and then it passes. And I think we could do that with things like term limits or a balanced budget amendment. If you ask the American people, when I ask crowds this, love every it. hand raised, Republican and Democrat, every one of them wants term limits. What about the, the issue of defunding? I had uh, Senator Mike Lee and Karl Rove. They both want Obamacare to go away. Tactically, Karl Rove doesn't like the idea of defunding it, which I know you're supporting Mike Lee on. Um, why, what is the, why is this the best method at this time in your mind? It's the only method at this time to do anything, and people want us to stand up. I ran on being against Obamacare. They ask me at every meeting, stand up and defund it. That's what everybody wants. Now, what I will tell them is, I may not be able to guarantee victory, but what I can guarantee is I will stand up. If the House were to defund it, the Senate probably won't. So the ultimate compromise is we take it away from Obama's agenda and back towards ours, which may not be defunding it, but you start, delay out, it. You start out with defunding it in order to maybe get to a delay or maybe to get to where the individual mandate goes away since the employer mandate he's already delayed. Why don't we use our leverage by having Republican House to, at the very least, get to delaying well, the individual Carl mandate? Well, a good point. He said we should be suing because the president, this is the law of the land. He doesn't have the right to unilaterally. I agree with that also, and I would sue. We did sue over the recess appointments. Remember, the president yeah. declared a recess even though we said we weren't in recess? And the court has rebuked him severely on this. When it goes to the Supreme Court, I think they're going to once again say he usurped power that's not his. We should do the same thing here. So he, could, he cannot unilaterally do that, decide that he's going to select and choose which laws to obey or not. Yeah, you can't, you can't amend legislation afterwards, just the president doing that. And Montesquieu talked about the separation of powers. He said that's where liberty lies. Liberty lies in separating those powers. The executive branch is not the legislative branch. You thinking of running for president? You won't tell anybody if I tell I you? Swear, just, uh, I swear. Uh, I don't want to say between uh, you and me because it got, it got one journalist in trouble once, but go ahead. You know, I have been thinking about it. I mean, we've been considering it. I'm talking with my wife and kids about it. We won't make a decision for probably a year. I think the party is ready for something different in the sense that we need to grow, we need to be more inclusive, we need more black people, brown people, white people, I say with tattoos, without uh, tattoos, with ties, without tattoos. We, we need all kinds of a range of people in order to get the Republican Party bigger. We need working class people, not just business class. And I think some of the ideas that are libertarian conservative do appeal to a broader range of people. All right. Good to see you. Rand Paul, appreciate it. It's uh, out in paperback government bullies. Thanks for being with us.